In the current context, where the world is witnessing heightened interreligious tensions and the strengthening of xenophobic trends, minorities worldwide have been facing increased victimization. The enhancement of equal citizenship rights through education constitutes a fundamental tool to build peace-driven societies. Education on equal citizenship can provide students with a sense of equality and solidarity. This will help youth to move forward the biases and preconceptions that they have may inherited and to learn to appreciate diversity as a source of richness rather than a threat. It is undeniable that the first step towards social harmony and shared citizenship starts with educating our youth. Today, we unite our forces to promote education as a vector for inclusive citizenship and societal harmony. With this focus on the promise of education, I hope our efforts today will represent a successful step forward. In order to analyze the actual situation and to review the role of education to achieve equal citizenship and human rights through training and teaching methodologies, the Geneva Center for Human Rights Advancement and Global Dialogue organized this panel discussion on May 12th at the UN Geneva. The title of the panel? Human Rights. Enhancing Equal Citizenship Rights in Education. The objective was to promote a culture of peace and developing healthy, inclusive and fair societies. The event was organized in cooperation with the UNESCO Office in Geneva, the International Bureau of Education and the permanent mission of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the UN Geneva. The panel took place at the sidelines of the 27th session of the Universal Periodic Review of the UN Human Rights Council. The organizers of the panel presented high-profile experts with extensive knowledge in the field of education, particularly in post-conflict situations and reconciliation in community settings. The discussions focused on three case studies – Bahrain, Colombia and Sri Lanka. In this context, Bahrain has enhanced its close collaboration with UN agencies in the field of education and culture, especially with UNESCO and IBE in Geneva. It also went through situations that involved opportunities, enhancing its experience in order to present it to the world. Bahrain also participated in the enhancement and the inculcation of the spiritual equal citizenship within the framework of its pedagogical and educational curriculums according to the entire education system based on the modern time, the technological progress and the IT boom in order to serve this high end. We need to make more efforts not only to fight for social justice of humans in the present moment, but also for those in the future generations by analyzing and taking action to preserve our natural resources and promote a sustainable world. As mentioned earlier, the cross-cutting themes, it's not that we should give only the uh, peace, social cohesion, sustainable development of human rights in, in subjects like civic education, history, but in all the subjects wherever it is possible. Additionally, the discussions drew on the pilot expertise of Finland as a model of successful integration of human rights and citizenship values within national curricula. And now the new curriculum, its focus is very, very strongly on fostering democratic values positive cooperation and participative school culture. It's important to have knowledge and to get to know uh, children and, and people from other cultures. And uh, it is as well very important to know first about your own history and, and cultures and, and to be anchored in the society in that way. So it is much easier to, to, um, to meet the other cultures. So today the case studies, I mean, if we summarize, we can see in all the case studies, education was a focal point. Even I said that education is a powerful tool to shape the minds and hearts of people towards bringing peace and social cohesion. So all the four case studies talk about that, uh, different approaches we have taken, so that we need to take these different approaches to our context in a suitable way. What lessons can be drawn from the case studies under discussion? Uh, 
We are benefiting from today's shared experiences, giving us the impression that we are taking steps towards the establishment of citizenship and human rights in a good way. There is indeed enough awareness to instill all these values in youth in particular. According to the experts, there is an urgency to counteract divisive trends and to respond to the proliferation of hate by instilling a culture of peace and tolerance. How then can we ensure that the lessons learned and the best practices achieved on global citizenship education can be transferred on the domestic level? Well, the first thing I think we need to do to ensure that children and youth are perceiving um, diversity as an enrichment, not as a threat, is by giving them the opportunity to work, to work together and see how their difference become part of their relationships and not only religious or cultural differences, but other types of difference that are for sure in the cooperative work that they can uh, do at school um, are going to enrich their work together. Especially in the mainstream media, the tendency is to emphasize differences and antagonism, particularly concerning the two leading religions, Christianity and Islam, and to depict them as discordant and clashing. The challenge for schools is to ensure that cultural and religious differences are perceived by the youth as an enriching diversity rather than a threat. Education for peace encompasses five pillars. Knowledge of peace, health, environment, economy and society. In order to build tolerant and peace-driven societies and to counter the scourge of xenophobia and violent extremism, policymakers must take into consideration the youth and their educators and incorporate in the day-to-day -day curricula specific trainings on these values. Civic education is about political rights. It's about the responsibility of the citizen in exercising the rights as a political animal, taking the Aristotle's definition of policy, politics. And civil education is about the respect of diversity, learning to live together, appreciation of cultural diversity. The challenge countries have today, we believe in UNESCO, is to put them together. It's not about civil education or civic education, it's about putting them together because they, we have to connect the political rights of the person with the appreciation of the diversity. How can we ensure that teachings about other cultures and religions are integrated into national curricula? By forgetting the past and everything bad that had happened in the past, with will and power, in addition to the energy of the youth, this way we can overcome these difficult phases. We need to empower young women and men to become active citizens in facing and resolving global challenges and contributing to a more peaceful, uh, tolerant, inclusive and secure world. This requires helping learners develop critical thinking, empathy and respect for diversity. This requires providing young people with a positive sense of identity and belonging and to foster mutual understanding and respect among youth, including through interfaith and intercultural dialogue. This is the spirit that drives UNESCO's action on global citizenship education and the human rights education enshrined within the Global Education 2030 Agenda, the roadmap for which is the Education 2030 Framework for Action led by UNESCO. According to the 2011 UN Declaration on Human Rights Education and Training, human rights education encompasses knowledge and understanding of human rights norms and principles, the values that underpin them and the mechanisms for their protection. 
As an Arab Jordanian Christian woman, I cherish citizenship in my country, where I enjoy full rights and liberty as stipulated in the Islamic legislations. We notice that awareness has increased through participation, cooperation and the collective spirit in one team. The feeling of belonging has been noticed as well with everyone who goes to these schools. Pursuing the vision of education contained in the Declaration, the concept of global citizenship education was integrated as one of the global targets in both the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Incheon Declaration and Framework for Action Education 2030, adopted in 2015. Education for democratic citizenship and human rights education contribute fundamentally to the ability to live together in communities, in countries and as neighbors across national borders, thus enabling a flourishing global community. The purpose of this side event was to counteract the discourse focused on divergences and divisions and to seek solutions for building societies anchored in unity and tolerance that celebrate diversity and promote equal citizenship rights. What has come out of this discussion in particular is the fact that uh, we all recognize that we need to promote uh, equal citizenship rights worldwide. It doesn't happen by itself. It has to be fostered. Even countries that have done it, and we heard the example of Finland, re re revises its, uh, its uh, performance every 10 years and tries to add, complete it as, as uh, required. Now, this does not mean that there is a, uh, a roadmap that is applicable to all as to how you do it. What applies in the case of Bahrain completely different to what works in the context of uh, Colombia or uh, in the context of uh, Sri Lanka. Each one has got its specificities. This panel debate was a timely opportunity to discuss the role of education in promoting and in enhancing at the domestic level equal and inclusive citizenship rights, as education has the power to be a transformative tool for building societies based on the principles of peace, tolerance and social harmony. It's fairly easy to be open about differences in languages and civilizations when you're talking about the people that are across the oceans. It's another matter to be able to have this sense of equal citizenship rights in a community where you rub shoulders with students that are from different uh, uh, ethnic origin, different religion, different languages. So the, really the crux is to get young people to consider that their diversity is not a source of difference, but it's on the contrary a uh, celebration, a reason to celebrate on its richness.